Alright everybody, welcome back to another edition of the War Report here on Cloudwing Valley. This was battle number two, Saturday, December 3rd, 2022. I'm your host, Foglata, and of the Gashiki tribe, and you guys know me. We've been running it since season six. It's been a long time that we've been running this here stream. It's been a lot of fun. First up, there are a few key terms I'm going to cover for you. Prestige is the amount or the value of the land that you own. A claim is the total amount of prestige week after week, battle after battle, all tallied together. Kind of giving you an overall view of your total, how much your, your community is worth. Renown is the difference between when you take over a property and where it is now. So if you raise the level of that thief, it's going to go up. If you downgrade it, it's going to go down. And then Triumphs is the prize that we all fight for. It's your end of season rewards, total value of your land. Um, fills your pockets. It's great. So next up, we're going to take a look at the current events. we got a lot on the calendar right now. As you guys know, uh, December 5th is when the Eye of the Storm happens. So we have the Borderlands, Anadolu, Liang Yun, all open. Your purple units will be back. You will have your armor set bonuses back. Auxiliary troops will be 400 points. Leadership will be a bonus 20. Battle number three is going to take place on Tuesday, December 6th. The mouse max ha mouse uh, max house rank will be four. Total number of thieves that will be available will be 134. Battle number four, Saturday, December 18th, max rank will be five. So by next Saturday, you should start seeing rank fives. Be able to take over all those properties. That's another, well, I guess 149 total thieves. And then battle number five, December 13th, battle number six, December 7th. That's when we see house rank six enter the field and 160 thieves will be available. Battle number seven, Tuesday, December 28th. Battle number 8, December 24th, and that's when we'll see house rank 7th. Now, forewarning, there was a poll to have the, the TW around New Year's and the TW around Christmas turn into drill modes, so that might happen. We'll see. It might be free battles, might be drill modes, might be a live war. We never really know with, with my games and booming, so we will have to wait and see. But as soon as I know, you'll know. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the politics around this here server. There were two changes that I noticed. Imperium of Atlas dropped for second, became independent. Based on their current location, um, I think that they might be looking to join Trinity. Um, could be an insider guess, I don't know, but they seem to be really friendly fighting together. And uh, that seems like a pretty nice pairing, if if I do say so myself. Uh, so Sophira joined the I three kingdoms and uh, we see them partying up now so not sure where the little house went that was up in the small pocket they're no longer there but um, I'm sure they'll pop back up sooner or later somewhere all right so let's take a look at the big alliance lineup there we go so so far family has 10,800 points on the board revenant 5,550 I3 kingdoms 5,550 Yellow Turbans, 2,850. Hibernia, 2,100. Tian Ming, 1,600. No Evil, 600. Trinity, 450. Next up, we're going to take a look at the war. Cruising on up to the northern borderlands. A whole lot of fighting going on out there. That's where we began, and that's where we ended. Take a look at the changes. Nemesis gained 1. Midway Kings gained 2. Sephira gained 3. Reaper gained 4. Leviathan gained 3. First Order gained 1, Partisans 2, I Kingdom 2, Imperium of Atlas 3. Then cruising on down to the southern region there, southern half of that Borderlands. There we go, that's the beginning, and that's the end. Looking at over the changes, we have Radiance gaining 1, I Kingdom gaining 3, Relentless gaining 1, Reaper gaining 1. Taking a look at the overall picture of all the houses of the Borderlands. We have the Borderlands Legion still holding on to 33% of the world. First Order with 11% with 2,550. Midway Kings, 2,400. I Kingdom, 1,650. Nemesis, 1,200. Reaper, 1,050. Sephira, 900. Gosh, get dubbed 900. Partisans, 900. Relentless, 750. Radiance, 600. Imperium of Atlas, 450. Leviathan, 450. Mason on 300. Speak, 300. Solemn Order 300 and Goshkia 150. Cruising on over to Anadolu, this is where we began. And that's where we ended. Looking at the changes, 
Blackwing Garden gained 2, Cohorts gained 1, Warborn gained 3. Looking at the total houses of Anadolu, we have the Anadolu Legion owning 85% of the prestige. Warborn has 8% with 2,250. Muramasa with 800. Vigilantes with 600. Blacking Wing Guard with 300. And Solemn Order with 200. Taking a look at the race for Regionopolis. Revenant is now in the pocket for being able to siege that capital the moment it opens. They have 3,150. All they need is 3,000. So they should be able to knock on that door as soon as it's available. Let's go ahead and take a... Whoops. We don't even have to go there yet. We don't have to worry about Leyang Yoon. It, it, I can... You know, spoiler alert. It looks the same as it started. Let's go ahead and take a look at Movers and Shakers. So there we go. Top gains of the night. Reaper with five new fiefs. Warborn with three. I Kingdom with three. Leviathan with three. Sephira with two. Blackwing Guard with two. Imperium of Atlas with two. Radiance with one. Midway Kings with one. Partisans with one. Biggest losses, First Order lost 5, Solemn Order lost 3, The Shadow Order lost 3, Odin lost 2, Gashke lost 1, Nemesis lost 1, and Sodium Chloride lost 1. Looking at the Alliance Movers and Shakers, we have Yellow Turbans gaining 6, Revenant gaining 5, I3 Kingdoms gaining 4, and Trinity gaining 3. Biggest losses of the night, Family lost 4, Hibernia has lost 3. This brings us around to your favorite time, Raffle Time. Go ahead and type in CV now, and you too could win a 10 battle hero XP card. Theoretically, it should be multiples of those, but I've been told there's only one. So I don't know, I don't want to false advertise. 10 battle hero EXP card is what we raffle. If you get more than that, be surprised, be happy, go forth and conquer, you know. All right, now you gotta promise me, if you win this and you are under level 100, you will not use this until after level 100. Savor every moment before 100. Take my word for it. You're gonna regret it if you if you zip past it and don't have the units that you need to be able to fight at the higher playing field. You're going from JV to, to freaking NFL. You know, seriously. Alright, let's go ahead and roll this. Congratulations to Esmina. You won the 10 Battle Hero EXP card. Congratulations. I will hit you up with the code shortly after the stream. Next up, we are going to take a look at the rankings. So, the Fief Race. We have a bunch of houses race into level 5 so that they can have 15 new Fief opportunities available to them. Currently at house rank 4, we have Partisans, Goshke Dub, Radiance, Mazedon, Midway Kings, Nemesis, and First Order. In the House Level 3 category, we have Vigilantes, Sephira, I Kingdom, Imperium of Atlas, Goshkia, Hear, Speak, Odin, Relentless, Reaper, and Warborn. In the House Level 2 category, we have Leviathan, Muramasa, Hurt, Sodium Chloride, Solemn Order, The Shadow Order, and Blackwing Guard. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Top 10 Houses. In first place, we have First Order of Family, 2,550 prestige, level 4, Tong Tong is the leash, population is 100, seasonal acclaim of 5,850, renown of 150, property value of 115 triumphs. Next up, in second place, we have Midway Kings of Family, 2,400 prestige, level is 4, LK is the leash, population is 100. Seasonal claim at 3,450. Renown of zero. Property value of 130 triumphs. Next up in third place, we have Warborn of Revenant. 2,250 prestige. Level is three. Zilong Yongcheng is the liege. Population is 93. Seasonal claim of 4,050. Renown of negative 50. Property value of 100 triumphs. All right. Next up in fourth place, we have I Kingdom of the I Three Kingdoms. 1,650 prestige. Level is three. I Secret is a leash. Population is 96. Seasonal claim of 2,700. Renown of 150. Property value of 75 triumphs. Next up in fifth place, we have Nemesis of I Three Kingdoms. 1,200 prestige. Level is 4, purely Casey is a leash, population is 94, seasonal claim of 1,950, 
renown of zero, property value of 55 triumphs. Next up in sixth place, we have Reaper of the Yellow Turbans. 1,050 prestige, level is three, instant kills is the leash, population is 45, seasonal claim of 1,350, renown of zero, property value of 45. There you go. All right, in seventh place, we have Gashki Dub of Hibernia with 900 prestige, level is four, Boglada is the liege, population is 81, seasonal claim of 1,800, renown of 450, property value of 45 triumphs. And next up, in eighth place, we have Partisans with 900 prestige, level is four, Agalia is the liege, population is 62, seasonal claim of 1,650, renown of zero, property value of 40 triumphs. All right. And then in ninth place, there we go. Safira of I3 Kingdoms, 900 prestige, level is three. Aiden's Guard is the liege, population is 92. Seasonal claim of 1,500, renown of zero, property value of 30 triumphs. All right. Next up, rounding up that 10th place, we have Muramasa with 800 prestige. Level is two, Zug is the liege, population is 38. Seasonal claim of 1,600, renown of zero, property value of 40 triumphs. Next up, we're gonna bounce over to the top 20 houses board. Relentless is in 11th, 12th, Vigilantes, 12th or 13th, Radiance. Solemn Order, 14, Imperium of Atlas, 15, Leviathan, 16, Mason, 17, Speak, 18, Black Ring Guard, 19, Goshki is 20th. Take a look at the Little Lion standings. In first place, we have Family with 5,700 prestige. Seasonal claim of 10,800, renown of 150. Property value of 280 triumphs. Population is 250. Midway Kings is the lead with First Order and Relentless at their side. Next up in second place, we have I3 Kingdoms with 3,750 prestige. Seasonal claim of 6,150, renown of 150, property value of 160, population of 282. I Kingdom is the lead with Nemesis and Sephira at their side. In third place, we have Revenant with 3,150. Seasonal claim of 5,550, renown of negative 50, property value of 140, Population is 220. Vigilantes is the lead with Warborn and Blackwing Guard at their side. Next up in fourth place, we have the Yellow Turbans, 1,950 prestige. Seasonal claim of 2,850. Renown of zero, property value of 105 tramps. Population is 241. Maestan is the lead with Reaper and Radiance at their side. Next up, coming in fifth, we have Hibernia with 1,050 prestige. Seasonal claim of 2,100, renown of 450, property value of 60 triumphs, population 271. Goshki is the lead with Goshki Dub and Odin at their side. And next up, in sixth place, we have Tian Ming with 800 prestige. Seasonal claim of 1,600, renown of zero, property value of 40 triumphs, population is 38. Muramasa is still alone in this alliance. And I believe we do have a number seven, pretty sure. What to say it is Trinity with 450 prestige. Seasonal claim of 450, renown of zero, property value of 15 triumphs, population of 84, Leviathan is the lead. All right, next up in eighth place, for sure, it's the No Evil, 300 prestige. Seasonal claim of 9,600, renown of zero, property value of 70. Population of 249, speak as the lead with C and here at their side. 
And at this point, I'm pretty sure we have a free agent or two. Let's go ahead and click this on over. There we are. So Partisans with 900 Prestige, Solemn Order with 500, and Imperium of Atlas with 450. These are the free agents that will most likely find a home in the coming week. So taking a look at the Legends board, pretty much remain the same. Radiance on top in first, Mason on in second, Midway Kings in third, Goshki in fourth, First Order in fifth, sixth is Hurt, seventh Warborn, Nemesis in eighth, Vigilantes in ninth, Atlas in tenth. Up next, we're going to take a look at the regional growth. Top Thief Builders overall, Goshki Dub with 450, First Order with 150, I Kingdom with 150, and then everybody else pretty much baselining at zero. Taking a look at the most prestigious fiefs in the land. At fief level 6, Chrysanthius, Abritas, Astronopolis, Bridia, and Marsicoroda. Um, all of those offer a 40% bonus rewards for fief quests. At the level 5 category, you get a 20% bonus reward. And then the level 4, you get a 10% bonus reward. So check out those various fiefs. If you're delivering fief quests, that's where you want to go to get some bonuses. All right, so taking a look at the Borderlands. Let's take a look at that prosperity real quick. We have 25% is your prosperity growth. That's 7,350, currently a poor rating. 88% is owned by free houses, 12% by legion. Average fort level is two, average town level is three, average village level is one. Top renowned builders right now are Goshkia Dub with 450 renown. First order with 150. And I Kingdom with 150. Top fortified stronghold in the region is Bridia at rank 6. There are no rank 2 villages at this point in the Borderlands. So taking a look at the last minute Thief Quest guys. If you haven't done your Thief Quest yet, this is what you should be targeting. For top player EXP gains, you want to be getting the common Rebel Cavalry kits or the Coursers over to Bridia. That is 3,500 player EXP per turn in. Top honor gains right now, Bridia has the Epic Artillery for 840. And then if you have top house EXP needs, Whalewin is still your best option there with 240 per turn in. There's quite a bit of fiefs around the region with that um, regional exotic. Most of them will give you 200 by default. The really good ones will give you 220 or 240. All right, there is no siege crafting in all the borderlands of the purple or higher variety. So borderland unit kit crafting, however, you can craft kits. It's at Bridia. There are two gold kits available there, three purple kits. Shojin has three purple kits. Whalewind, four purple kits. And Zadeni has two purple kits. One of which is the Camel Lancers, which comes out next week. So uh, just in a couple days here, you're going to have the access to those Camel Lancers. All right, so next up, we're going to take a look at the prosperity of Anadolu. So here you can see they have 38% as free houses, 62% is legion, 12,500 prosperity growth, average fort level is 5, average town level is 5, average village level is 2. The Anadolu Legion has upgraded enough to get 450 renown. Good job, cohorts. I'm proud of you. Top fortified strongholds, Abridas is rank 6, Mars Kroda, Astronopolis, Chrysanthius, all rank 6. A lot of bonuses there. Uh, so top Growing Villages, Ancriana is ranked 2, Manrobel is ranked 2, Muradiba, Nova Justinia, Padisara, all ranked 2. So good work getting those ranked 2 villages up out there. Take a look at the last minute fief quest. Barbs over to Basindia, 3,600. You have the Fort Hypate, 10 rare Rebel Cavalry kits for another 3,600. Top honor gains, you have several options for the epic artillery drop off. Abritus, Marsakota, or Astronopolis will all get you 840 honor per turn in. Top house EXP gains, Marsakota, Astronopolis, Chrysanthius, all 280 per turn in. Very good options for you there. Now we're still looking at only kit crafting in Anadolu. So here's what you got. Over at Abritus, you have two gold kits, two purple kits. Astronopolis has three gold kits. Two purple kits. Marsakota Mar has two per or two purple and two gold kits. Uh, Anagokli, Anakuros, Basindia, Bolin, Lystria, Scythia, and Silontia 
all have two kits per purple. So uh, the best one right here is the Halberd Sergeant kits. And if you can find the longbow kits, I don't know if there's any longbow kits, but longbow kits are really cheap to make. Same with the Halberd Sergeants. So uh, that's probably your best bet for those kit crafting. All right, so over in Liang Yun, it has pretty much been dormant until next Tuesday. Tuesday is when the doors open, technically at the reset this weekend. So Sunday night, if you're on the West Coast, uh, Monday morning, if you're on the East Coast, is when the gates of Liang Yun will open. You'll be able to flood on in and take, take care of business over there. Go scout out the territory. I will be posting the full list of thief quests over on the Conqueror's Blade Hub. You can go to gsch.info slash war report if you like to follow along. Everything I post here on the stream is also posted over there uh, for safekeeping, so you'll be able to see it all there. You can watch it in the aftermath. So, like, after I do it here, I take it off, push it on over to YouTube, upload it to the war report site. So, uh, in any case, I thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for the follows, guys. I really appreciate you guys tuning in week after week. It's been a fun run. And uh, I look forward to entertaining you for another season. In any case, have a good one, guys. I will see you next time.